I have never seen anything like this in my life, in my career. Yeah, our role is fluid. It changed so much, especially with the pandemic. It has been so many things at so many different times. The pandemic is what it took for the government to really say, aha, we get it. Like we understand school mental health is not a nice to have or a add on, it's an essential service. One thing that I've really uh, been surprised by, but also very flattered by, is that community organizations and community groups are now reaching out to us and saying, we want to have your organization come and do a workshops. And we haven't done any advertising at all. It's just like, honestly, it's just been word of mouth, but it's really exciting and it shows like how huge the need is. It's forced us to look at, at the, the use of technology from an access perspective, right? So it isn't just about, oh, this will be more convenient. It's really realizing that, you know what, for people to come to Toronto from Timiskaming, it's not easy and it's expensive. On ne pouvait pas se déplacer euh, le matin en Gaspésie, l'après-midi au Saguenay, euh, alors que le contexte de pandémie nous a forcé un peu à transiger vers l'accompagnement des écoles en ligne, puis ça, ça a facilité le déploiement plus large. Ça fait que ça, c'est peut-être un aspect plus positif là, que la pandémie a eu sur le déploiement à plus large échelle du projet. Là. You know, the, the youth especially that are really struggling with kind of leaving their house, and we have a lot of highly social isolated youth anyway, um, due to, you know, the transphobic society that we live in. I think that it allows them to attend in some safer ways, right? We um, are working with populations across the North, um, having facilitators who are representing populations across the North has been super helpful and um, not pan-Indigenizing. Um, our retreats has been fantastic so that we are getting different perspectives and everyone, uh, everyone's voices are, are heard. It's, it's really a blessing to be able to work, um, you know, at an organization where your voices are heard, where you're able to help your community with the right resources. And when you are able to achieve that kind of trust within the community, then you can do anything. The fact that we are able to have this program from a population health approach is like, it was so timely, don't you think? It's so timely that we are able to provide this for anybody who's experiencing any level of difficult parenting or challenges that way, and or if they just want to hone their parenting skills and prevent issues from happening. Like for Canada, this is a huge step in the right direction for us from a, a, a mental health population prevention and promotion approach because boy we're seeing great results right so it works it has given imp an opportunity to really highlight um the the inequity of access to services by indigenous communities so there's been some real um system change i think for me in terms of imp's advocacy role the pandemic has really helped me see that if we don't speak for really young children and their families, literally no one will speak for them. No one. We're changing systems. Like we're actually changing systems. Oui, fait que là, ça vient démontrer, tu sais, que on est vraiment, tu sais, bien aligné avec ce volet-là également. Puis qu'il tient la route dans le cadre de la COVID aussi, tu sais, il a su euh, outiller les jeunes à, à mieux passer à travers. You know, we like this process and we don't like to this, you know, project to stop. <laughs> This is just this has been such a wonderful conversation and we really appreciate you taking the time and sharing everything with us. Mm -hmm.